We got a new giveaway for you today. So normally we give away programs, but today here's what we're going to give away to one of you lucky viewers, one of you lucky, handsome, beautiful, awesome looking people. I can see you through the camera. Magic. Anyway, here's the giveaway. Free access to our Mind Pump private forum. So in the private forum, we have lots of fitness minded people, lots of people who like to share memes, debate the things that we talk about on the podcast. We have fitness professionals. Also, Adam, Justin, and myself are in the forum occasionally as well. So if you leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, by the way, that helps us with the YouTube algorithm. That's why it's so important. Leave a comment, make it a good comment, subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, you get free access to the Mind Pump private forum. Also, before we start the podcast, don't forget two workout programs are on sale this month. MAPS Performance, MAPS Suspension, both 50% off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50 with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Hey, so yesterday, right, I come in here, and um, when I have the, the older kids with me, usually what I used to do is I'd work out real early at home so I could have my full time to work out, but that tends to wake up the baby, right? So I try to squeeze it in here. So yesterday I did... A one and but, but usually takes me about an hour and twenty minutes workout in about forty minutes. So it was Just cramming it, fast paced and intense, and I got a crazy pump or whatever. And afterwards, uh, just kind of serendipitously, I, a study pops up that shows that shorter rest periods causes more muscle damage. So when they measure muscle damage, the markers of muscle damage, shorter rest periods cause more damage the longer rest periods. And one thing that annoys me with studies like this, which, you know, whatever, is people then concluded, oh, yeah. this, this this must build more muscle. Yeah, this just proves the other more. studies that show that longer rest periods build more muscle or whatever. And it annoys me because it, neither one of those is correct. They all kind of work right. And even for me yesterday, because I normally do that workout in so long, that shorter workout, it felt like you guys, I'm sure now you've been working out for so long, you can kind of tell after a workout like, oh, that was, yeah. that was good. That's going to set things in motion. I could tell that the faster pace was something that my body needed. Yeah, because you hadn't done it. Forever, new right? stimulus. Because I had not done it. And uh, I've I, that, you know you sore from it. Oh, I, you know what's funny? Uh, a little bit. Um, I can feel a little bit. Do you know what's crazy? His training volume is so high right I now. Know, I doubt he gets sore from anything. I was right doing now. those. Uh, he was a horse. The, I was doing those. Um, we were gonna uh, have a sit down talk with you about <laughs> really. Yeah, just your addiction to lifting. Yeah, it's oh, a little right. obsessive. Lifting too many things. That's a little obsessive. Yeah. you guys are like, how can we? How can we word yeah. this so that he slows down? No, <laughs> I, I, uh, I was doing the hip thrust out there. That you guys love making fun of, mm. and um, yeah, it's still out there. I mean, I video it. There's only one person. This could be right here. No, I unracked it. I finally <laughs> yeah, unracked it. Four days later. Still I had to hurry there. up. Yeah. Dude, I had the craziest, still out there. Justin will appreciate this, mm. glute pump of all oh, time. Yeah, yeah. I was walking like Justin Just for a second. Robbing. Oh, yeah. it was, it yeah. was hanging all over the place, whoa, whoa, the glutes. Whoa. But anyway, yeah, I, the, I could tell that, that because that was different, it's, it, it's good. It worked. Um, and that's really the key here. But it is interesting, right? They, they show in that study more... Yeah muscle damage. Uh, I mean, I felt the opposite though. I remember the first time I, I remember I was so mad because I was like consistently training. Like I was in one of my kicks where I had missed in forever and I was training with one of my buddies who I don't like to work out with in the first place. Wait, wait why? <laughs> I just like, I don't like working. You guys know, I don't like working out with anybody. Oh yeah. That's yeah. True. And yeah. so, uh, we were training together and he ended up like, we ran into a bunch of friends and the workout ended up being like two and a half hours, but 90% of it was talking. And I remember being so upset, but then I ended up getting really sore from it. And I remember scratching my head going like, that was so not an intense workout. Yeah. But because of the long rest periods, what I think happened that I didn't even realize, like, oh, I kept, I was stronger going into all the sets. Totally. So I probably did a lot more than what I would normally do. And then, and because I never trained that way, it was super sore from that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Speaking of which, you're, you're, you're totally coming back, bro. I can see it now. Really? I saw you in your workout. I swear to God, I saw you in your workout today and you were getting pumped and all that stuff. I, dude, I'm, I'm, and I'm things, all... It looks like things are starting to respond. Yeah, I, how's the I, endurance? Terrible still. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm definitely not. I'm not. I'm not normal, dude. I still have these days. So I've completely given up the the smoking weed thing. Which, uh, be honest, I was going back and forth on like, okay, I think I'm okay. Let me try a little bit. Oh, and it's like, mm. no. Every time I would do that, I would feel something kind of in my lungs. So I've had to switch over to uh, uh, edibles, which I don't like doing at all because I still haven't figured out that like without feeling groggy in the morning. 
Um, but I've been doing mostly suspension trainer and body weight stuff. So pull up suspension trainer today. You saw me doing a little bit of dumbbell work. Um, so I'm doing like a modified version of our suspension trainer and feels good, but I'm only, I trained twice last week, uh, that you just saw me do the first day of this week. So I haven't been, I haven't been really hitting it, but I'm also the thing that's different about me today than probably in my twenties is I've gotten really good about, uh, knowing to how quickly to adjust my calories based off of my intake. My insecurities of being the skinny kid was in my head for so long that I always ate. Yeah. Regardless if I was training or not, I needed to eat. I needed to eat because I need to be bigger. I need to be bigger and I, I can't, not, not getting enough calories. And so even when I wasn't training, I was still eating excessive as far as calories where I don't have that insecurity anymore. I'm not afraid if I lose five or 10 pounds mm -hmm. of muscle, whatever. So I dramatically reduced my calorie intake. And so I maintained my fitness a lot. And to the point of the study you brought up the other day, it really I can really tell that it, the amount of volume just to kind of maintain mm -hmm. a decent physique, I don't have to do that much, dude. You got a lot of muscle memory going on for sure. Yeah, especially with what where I was just a few years ago. You know, I, that, I was at the, that was the peak of my training career was obviously training for the show and my volume was so high. I can, I still have, that's, what's cool about that is, I mean, yeah, a lot of room to go. It, well, there was just, there's that muscle memory is such a real thing. You know, And I trained so hard, so consistently to reach, you know, I, I think the peak lean body mass, I got up to like 210 or something like that of, of pure lean body mass. I never had anything like that. I normally like probably right now, 170, 180. So my body kn knows what it's like to have over 200. And I just touch the weights a little mm -hmm. bit, bump calories a tiny bit, and then it like responds. Yeah. I, I noticed for you, Justin, you've been uh, bumping up your reps a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. You know, like I, I actually split. Um, so I'll do my first half like in here and then I'll go home and I'll do the other half. Oh. And I've, and I've tried to make it more high reps and more of pumping sessions and, and trying to get more bodybuilding type, uh, uh, workouts instead of my normal, like, you know, five reps or so that, and then done. So it's, it's actually <clears throat> been kind of nice in, in terms of being nicer on my joints. Like my joints are feeling good. Like I feel like a little bit more energy, uh, I'm way more active now too, ever since the move and everything. So I've been like, you know, trying to balance all that out, but this has been feeling better in terms of like not being all achy and, and, and sore my joints. Yeah. You know what else I've been doing that I, you might be interested in this and I, I've speculated on this. I have nothing, no research to prove this, but I have this theory that as long as I get the first two days, uh, after my shot, of training, it seems that I get a better response from the training. You mean after your uh, your testosterone? testosterone? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. like I take a testosterone shot every week, mm -hmm. and you know because I've only been training two, three times a week. Uh, you I time it. Yeah, I timed it. I make mm -hmm. sure that like you know she said last night was my shot. So today I was like, God, I'm going to train today for sure, and I'll train tomorrow. Like, and I notice if I, I I'm a, and because the way it works, I take my shot and I probably peak over you know, 1100, 1200 or whatever, say, you know, a free test or whatever. Oh, higher than that. Yeah. Uh, Maybe the, a little bit. The peak is higher. It's when it falls, then it comes down. Yeah. But I've never been, I've always fallen well below 700. Exactly. So, but, but, but you know, you're, what you're saying is, uh, I don't know if there's any studies around it, but it makes perfect sense because when you take it, the, the, the peak happens 24 to 48 40 hours. hours. Yes. And that makes perfect sense that you would have be the most responsive. That's what I think, right? So that's, I, I mean, I, I tend to also try and I, eat, I'm, I was training, so I'm eating a little more. So I bump calories. I get two good training sessions and I feel like it, it's more responsive. Well, here's the other thing with testosterone that we con we think of it as, okay, masculinizing hormone. Yes. It signals the body to build muscle, especially if you're working out. It has an effect on the central nervous system too. So you'll see athletes who take anabolics, right? So anabolic steroids are all basically designed based off of testosterone. They're slight, they're changed molecularly, but they, they attach the same receptors as testosterone. And you'll see athletes taking certain hormones right before competitions or the day before because they feel stronger right away. They didn't build muscle that quickly, but it def definitely has an effect on the CNS. So it makes sense that the day after or two days after, you would also just feel stronger as a result. You know what I'm excited about listening to? So I don't want to, I don't know if this person is okay with us sharing their name, so I'm not going to say it, but somebody we know, right, um, went to mphormones.com, worked with Dr. Rand's team or whatever, is a female. Oh. And they're oh. going through 
the hormone. They're doing hormone therapy as a woman, and it includes testosterone also. Now, testosterone is also present in women, obviously at a much, much lower degree, mm -hmm. but it does the same things for a woman that'll do for a man, more strength, fat loss, energy, that kind of stuff. They're at week two. So they're not, they're noticing me. I talked to them. They're noticing maybe a little bit. It usually takes about four weeks. And I, I'm, I can't wait to hear yeah. what they feel yeah, as a female doing the hormone therapy. I'm very therapy. curious about that. Yeah. When he was talking about him, he treats a lot of women too. I was like, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Cause, uh, you, you know, the, and I've talked to, to my wife a bit about that too, with like the hormone imbalance and things that she's gone through, even through pregnancy and trying to recover from that. And, you know, just to, to be able to, you know, get a good doctor to look at all, all of your hormone profiles and really assess like, you know, where they can intervene mm. is so helpful. Dude. Okay. So, um, I'm going to take a left turn here, but you guys ready for like a, a like a science quiz real quick? A yeah. science okay, quiz? This is fun, right? <laughs> so Doug, can you pull up the picture that I sent you? So I want you guys to look up at the screen. Do you guys some game music. Do you guys know what that is? What part? Testicles. Okay. So you okay, think that's wait, testicles. It, what do you think uh, that is? Uh, Justin. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's either testicles or like the back of like your throat, but I, I, it looks like a, it looks like a flower. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a full anatomy picture of the entire clitoris. Okay. So in the body. Okay. Okay. Well. So, okay. So here's why this came up, right? So <laughs> you guys are like, what the Sex hell's going on today? Here? This is yeah, great. What's okay. going on? So yeah. Jessica and I, last night, we have a big like Roman tub. In the Andrew, have you seen one of those before? <laughs> 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 not the whole they thing. Exist, I hope not. Andrew. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not like that. <laughs> not like that. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny that you said testicles, by the way, because <laughs> you can see how similar the, the male anatomy and female anatomy actually are, right? So anyway, here's, here's why I brought this up. So last night, funny story, right? So Jessica and I are sitting in the bathtub together, hanging out. And, you know, we're just chilling, lighting some candles, having good conversation. And this big joke that, you know, Jessica's like, I can't, it's like, we can, we can try to hang out, but if we're naked, you're always going to try and have sex with me or whatever. So I'm trying, I'm really like focusing, like we're going to just connect. <laughs> like, like I can talk right now. I promise. Yeah. yeah like we're going to be cool. Yeah. So we're having good conversation. I'm keeping my mind, you know, focused on like, like, or off focus. The fact that yeah. my wife is naked right next to me or whatever. So we're talking and, you know, she, we were joking about this and she goes, you could find, you know, so, anything sexual about anything. She's like, I bet you could talk about science facts and, and it'll make you, you know, turned on or whatever. And I'm like, I definitely can. So we started talking about the anatomy of the clitoris and I was like, get so <laughs> go into it or whatever. So I brought this up. She didn't know this either. She's, I showed her this and she's like, what? That's what it looks like. So, but you can see how much uh, larger it is than what we think. And this is, this is why. There's so so it's so much more complicated than we think. But anyway, I thought that was a cool picture <laughs> hey. to bring up. But yeah, that's what we were so talking all about. That's on the inside. Yes. Okay, I got yeah. It. And those yeah, two yeah. like wishbone areas of the clitoris, uh, they go around the the I guess the vaginal canal, and sometimes they get close to where the you know where the anus is. And this is why women can find pleasure in, in different ways and stuff. So we're having that conversation. <laughs> so that's of how course. you're selling this whole thing. Of right? course. Yeah. It's you know it's I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting in the mood. We're not, <laughs> well, I'm I mean, gonna that's have to a little use bit that different. Like, Eve well, trick. I found yeah. a way. Is all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll yeah. talk science. Yeah, 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 we'll talk science. You, you know what this is? It feels good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is all. You, cool. you know, Katrina. Katrina teases me because she she claims you know although I don't know if I'd argue with her but I haven't paid that close of attention that uh, it's a business talk or if we're talking about like positive things financially. That right? gets you turned on? Yeah. <laughs> she's like... Of course it does. Yeah. Like she's, she's like, I know better than to bring up like credit card bills oh, or something dude, like anything related. boner kill. Yeah, like that will absolutely yeah. kill it for me and yeah. some of that. But, you know, obviously she's she's work, works within the she's business. Like, honey, so she we saved 10% more money well, yeah, last month. Yeah, oh. or she'll be like, did you see that, <laughs> that deal that we just closed for that partnership? How much money we're going to make there? Like she'll say something like that. And I'm just like... I I know what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Right, yeah. Boner killer for me is like talking about tough conversations around the kids. Like, what do you think we should do about this? So oh, what, yeah. um, you know, everything goes down. Yeah. Well, but anything else is hey, like- Katrina came out yes, financial This is too, she's going to get mad at me for sharing this, but it's a funny story since we're going here. Uh, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in our room and we, we go to bed early, right? Going to bed early almost always means like, okay, it's going to be, a, we're getting some night. Right. So, but I'm, she's in the bathroom, she's taking a bath and like, so that's, I'm like thinking it's like an hour. So I'm hanging out and I'm watching, uh, our show on YouTube, you know, and I'm commenting back to people and stuff like that. Uh, and she comes walking out completely naked and s straddles over the top of me. 
And, and I'm like, uh, huh, no. And she's just like, are you serious? And I'm like, well, I'm listening to Sal's voice right now. Like, just, <laughs> just you give me a minute. I'm a, I was not ready. I was not ready to more of his voice. I was not ready for you to come out of the room like that. You mean that and, doesn't work at all? Yeah, and go straight to it when I'm like in the middle of listening to Sal debate something with me right now. I'm like, no, nah, just give me a few minutes, please. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. Uh, I'm gonna make like a like a. We had a good laugh. Video about re- it uh, like an audio recording oh, of me, God, Adam. You yeah. can do it. <laughs> yeah. hey, I don't think that's Keep gonna going. work. Make, make it happen. Hey, I got some for you guys. Did yeah. you uh, did you know how famous? Our guy is over here, Justin. Yeah, what? What, what happened now? Uh, watching uh, Bravo TV the other no, day, and up, up pops <laughs> hey, Justin. Hey, were you watching Real Housewives? Oh, or dude, something I heard like about this. No, yeah. I was not watching. What were you watching on there, yeah, bro? I watch uh, Million Dollar Listing on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, runway yeah, models or yeah, what, yeah, what else? Yeah, is so on hold there. on a second. So Justin was on Bravo. Yeah, like what? A commercial. So Paleo, Paleo Valley is uh, running his ads that he did on on TV. Oh, hey, try Paleo Valley beef sticks. Made with 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Loaded with all the daily vitamins and nutrients your body needs to shine. Hey, buddy. Consider a higher quality protein snack you'll actually feel good about. Damn, that's good. Paleo Valley, because quality matters. Oh, this is what is that? What is that called? Okay, so is that the right way to say it? They're running it on TV or they're running it on a streaming service? And so... I like, think it's probably streaming because yeah. it's technically not like old cable television anymore, right? It's not so, broadcast. I wonder it? though because I mean that still exists, and and there's a lot of people I know that still just watch cable and aren't into the whole streaming thing yet, yeah. which baffles me. But all right, that's cool. I mean, hey, okay. they they know the demographic of Bravo very well, don't they? <laughs> so let's think about this for a second. <laughs> well, I was in overalls. Bra- I, I, Bravo I is know. a lot of women. And I think probably gay men. So Dude, women and gay men. Lots of people watch it. Majority Bravo. of gay men, a little hey, bit of women. Their guy. Yeah, I watch yeah. it. I'm no, saying. no, I, I know that. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that watch it. But <laughs> Whatever, that's, dude. What, however it sells. You that, know and, what I mean? And in the, in the commercial, so people uh, who are watching this will see a little clip of it. Justin is in overalls and his like, white T-shirt, and he's yeah. all like... Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna sell. Chomping some, on a beef stick. That's gonna sell some Paleo <laughs> Valley beef sticks. <laughs> that's probably the. I just sure well, really sold yeah, it for yeah. sure. It's for the men, Chomping bro. That's what it's meat. really for. Dude, I'll tell you what. I, I'm in love with their their bone broth protein in the in the back. You use it like crazy. I always yeah. see you using it after. It's the most unprocessed protein I've ever had in my entire life. So it tastes like nothing, right? There. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, it tastes a little bit like bone broth, but there's not. There's literally nothing in it. Just bone broth. There's no no flavor, no nothing. It's little one ingredient. It's as close as you can get to the actual source that I've found. Now, how does that compare to um, what's the other source, which is like all the cartilage and the um, uh, what's it's so collagen. Pop- collagen. Thank you, Doug. Bone broth is full of collagen. I know, but comparing straight collagen protein versus bone broth protein, which one is so when superior? You, when you buy collagen, uh, typically it's a type of collagen that they're aiming for. Yeah. And so there's a different. Slight changes in amino acid profiles. Honestly, generally speaking, you're probably better off just going with straight bone broth because it's got a combination of all of them, and it's also closer to. Because that's natural. still a big deal right now. I yeah. mean, that's the, the the collagen protein. I get asked that in DMs all the time. Like, you know, I was told collagen protein's better for your skin and hair and this and that. It's like if you can handle whey. We've talked about this before. Yeah. If you can handle whey and it doesn't upset your stomach, you don't have any issues with it. Nothing is better than yeah. that. If, right? you're, if your protein intake is high, it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. You're getting all the amino acids, all that stuff. Well, if your protein intake isn't high, there's no reason for you to even take protein powder. Eat more protein. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, but, you, don't, you don't need any more. If you're hitting right. your targets on a regular basis, that, that's another thing, too, that we, it's been a while since we probably addressed that is this, there's this idea that you need to have a protein shake, you know, in order to be healthy. Or if you want to build muscle, it's like, no, if you hit. It through Whole Foods. Yep. There's no reason for now. You to now use that it. being said, let's say you're the typical um, typical female client that we would get back in the day, right? Which usually would not eat the what would be considered high protein. They're not hitting, you know, 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. They're typically much lower than that, um, and maybe it's tough for them to eat all that protein and meat, and they don't want to. Adding a little protein powder makes a difference, and if your protein isn't high or in that upper limit then the type of protein that you add does make a difference, right? So if you take someone who's eating below the upper limit for what we consider high protein based on studies, and you add collagen protein or bone broth protein, they do, studies do show improved skin, improved hair, nails, connective tissue, that kind of stuff. And mainly because of the amino acid profile 
that's in bone broth has the amino acids that are really good for those, you know, those types of things. So you will notice a difference if it brings you up to, you know, where you're supposed to be. But if you're already there, it really doesn't matter if it's vegan, if it's, you know, mm. if it's animal based, you have so many amino acids, it doesn't make any difference. It's like, it's like branched amino acids, you yeah. know, same thing, but it's the most, their bone broth, broth protein is so unprocessed, and when I drink it, it literally has zero digestive effects on me, like mm. nothing. It's like I'm drinking water, so that's why I like it so much because mm. I can add it, uh, you know, no problem whatsoever. Okay, I have to address something, and we're going to bring up the fight game. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Real <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah, get about- ready, my pump meme guy. Yeah, yeah, can we talk about how stupid that is, by the Dude. way? <laughs> Where they're, they're talking. It's cringy that we talk about the fight game because we don't know everybody's names. <laughs> oh, God. That's all it is, really. Yeah, because we forget names. Yeah, yeah. sue us. There's uh, always going to be somebody who you know knows more about something, and then they're like going to get offended because I mean, I get that all a lot because I'm the one who probably It's the talks same about in like baseball. Yeah, or like any other sport where you're just, you're not the guy that's sitting there reading all the stats and like knowing every little. Yeah. minute detail. Oh, it's so cringy when yeah, you talk about like, fights. But yeah, anyway, so there's Vitor Belfort and uh, Evander Holyfield apparently are fighting. I just saw yes. this. Is this real that, yes. that Donald Trump is going to be commentating? Yes. And Trump is, is commentating? Yes, dude. I can't believe you don't know this. this is, How do I not know this? This is yeah. going to be who's who's okay. Who's the promoter? Who's putting it on? Is oh, it is know. it Showtime? It's an excellent or? fights. Very good. Look fight. this up, Doug. I had no idea dude, about this. First of all. Evander Holyfield versus Vitor Belfort. What a brilliant That's idea. a fun fight to I know, watch. Right? That's a fun fight to watch, right? I'll watch that fight. I, I was a huge Vitor fan back in the day. Love Evander Holyfield. It's a boxing back match. Back in the day. Though, I don't that, care. That, it's not much different than what we just saw with the other guys. Exactly. Yeah. Evander's you know, way out of his prime. Vitor is closer to his prime than Evander, yeah. but also out of his prime. Probably now, not going to be drug tested, which means Vitor is going to show up now the in one, his old form. The one thing though that yeah, I, right? I, I worry about this stuff is that you know, is is this like? I mean, are there some of these guys like? I don't know where. I know Evander Holyfield lost his mansion years back or with that. Like, are these people like struggle? Are these guys struggling financially, and so they're looking ways to Probably. drum up? Well, oh, I'm sure they just want to because it payday. can't be safe and healthy for two old punchers like that to get in get in a ring and punch mm. each other in the head. Dude. It just you, doesn't sound like a good idea. I know, but at the, you're so far gone. Does it even matter? At the, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this fucking it's guy. like to make a difference, <laughs> well, and, dude. And right now, these like sideshows are making tons of money so oh, wait. it's just it's tempting i'm sure for his these old son. fighters no donald trump's son to provide commentary of evander holly and his son donald trump call my son but trump is going to be on the commentary for sure that's what i've been reading yes yeah. is that what's that's happening? correct yep. so both of them are going to be on okay that. so oh. this has to be whoever put this together the most brilliant thing i've ever heard in my entire life it's pretty genius first of all the fight itself Lots of fight fans would want to watch that. Mm-hmm. Now that Trump is going to be commentating, everybody's going to be wanting to watch that because who knows what's going to come out of his mouth. And I guarantee he's going to oh slip in. Oh, my God. Keep mad. That's huge. Bro, he's going to slip in political jabs the of entire course. time. It's going to light up the news cycle like crazy. He he's hasn't gonna- even been in any news in a long time, I'm sure. It's just like people are anticipating what's going to come out of his mouth. I this can't is believe smart. I, haven't, I haven't seen this. So where where is it going to be on? Do we know? what? what is it Showtime or is it somebody else? Is it is Oscar De La Hoya? It's so hard for me to read. No, yeah, De La so De La Hoya is uh, backed out of the fight, right? Because of COVID. Right. right. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. He's not and so this well. is a replacement. Oh, this will make more money than De-, De La Hoya. So it's probably De La Hoya's because De La Hoya is a promoter now. So he's got what's it? A Golden, Golden Boy. Yeah, Golden Boy Production or mm-hmm. whatever like that. So it's probably him who's putting it on then. And I wonder how much Trump is making for this. Uh, Interesting! I, wow, I can't believe I didn't hear about maybe this. Maybe nothing. Wait, wait, can I get yeah. a date? Can I get a date? I'm so sure he's just this? itching to get like listeners again. Yeah, you know what's you know what's interesting about the strategy is that now you're seeing get that date, it's not just the fighters that are going to attract uh, buyers; it's also the people surrounding the fighters. Because how many people are going to pay? Because now Trump is commentating, yeah. and who who would never have cared about the fight. Yeah. Like it's very interesting what's happening with these fights. You called it Adam. I you know, I I I, I did not think it would last this long, but you called it. This is very interesting. And look, it's mainstream news. CBS and CNN and Fox are all wow. reporting on it. Wow. This is going to Oh, oh it's, it's this, on 911. It's this Saturday. Wow. Oh, wow. That's okay. going to be <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> and the timing. <laughs> the timing is, of is it interesting all too. It's going to yeah. be very interesting. Damn, wow. I'm going to miss it, dude. Yeah, oh, we are wanted, we are going to miss it. Oh, I wanted to watch that. Yeah. Wow. But 
I I can't wait to see all the clips of the weird oh, <laughs> the yeah. shit that they oh, say. Yeah. Will they though, or will they? I mean, they they've tried to cancel him so much and silence him. Can they scrub every yeah. last thing? I don't yeah, know. I, I don't, don't know, know if they can. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah, manage the internet like that. Hey, did you? Did I know? I know Justin. You were watching. I think Doug was too. You watched the Caitlyn Jenner. Do you see now? Uh, so the other one came out. So they have a tennis. Oh, one the now. Trashers. Did oh, you no. watch that one? Yeah, I just started that. So oh, oh you yeah. just started. Yeah, you start it because because it's. Dude, one it's hour a doc, fight for dude. the TV. Like, like Courtney's putting the kids down. And I'm like, I just started it. Then she's like, I don't want to watch this. I'm like, ah. Oh. Mm. So I was getting you, into it. Are you guys both like that? Like, what what would you say? What percentage of the television that you watch that you like does your partner also watch? Are you guys half and half? Is it? Oh, probably 70% we're watching together. Because, okay. uh, yeah, I don't get a whole lot of time by myself. No, I mean, the content that you're watching, though, is it something that, like, uh, it, you? there's more of it that you guys both like, or does one person end up, oh. like, what's, like, how do you guys uh, match up? I get what up? you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm not wording it very well. Mm, Jessica Sorry. and I like stand-up comedy together. Sometimes okay. we'll watch a series together. She but likes do uh, documentaries with you, right? There are certain documentaries. Oh, no. Some, some she won't. Some she's not into. Into Others she is. She's like tech documentaries. Yeah, yeah, but but um, there's definitely shows that I like that she's like, whatever. But here's the deal. She's very, she's way, way more like flexible in the case. So for if I really want to watch something, she'll be like, whatever, just put it on. I'll just in between, I'll watch and, and be on my phone. I don't like to do that that often because then I feel like it's not really fair and I'm not enjoying, you know, because yeah. I want to watch with her. Right, right. So, but yeah, if we're going to watch something together, it's usually comedy or maybe a series or sometimes documentary. Otherwise, yeah. it's kind of funny because Courtney is like so into like murder shows and, and like oh, just yeah. it, like any kind of like serial killer, anything. That's so know? crazy. Like, yeah. And I'm, I just, I'm not into all that except when a cult's involved. Then I'm like, okay, like, we can watch this <laughs> together, you know, or like some kind of like CIA, like uh backstory to the whole thing. Then I'm interested, but other than that, I just can't watch those shows. She's also into hoarders, it, like intervention, like all that, uh, kind, like bad behavior shit. stuff. Yeah, I'm like, I don't like, ugh, like, it, I hate watching shows like that because I'm just like, it's just filth, you know. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm not really trying to get rid of all that. Like in, now, I'm looking at the house, like looking for things. She, it's the opposite effect on her. She feels better. Yeah, yeah, you know that that we're clean. I can relate to that. You guys know my my stories when I'm sick when I watch it. Yeah, yeah, and sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It makes me feel better about myself. That's why you're watching Bravo. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, dude, I the the hoarders and the ones that are like my six hundred pound life and stuff like that. Yeah, you know I can watch them. But I can't watch them for too long. Yeah, I start to feel. I like to peer in on those, but I can't watch like a whole series of that. I feel I start to feel really bad. Oh, so intervention fu literally fucks me up. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't exactly. Do it. I know. I'm just like ah, oh, I just it's just gut wrenching. It's because I have kids. Yeah. You, you know what part fucks me up the most? They show the addict, and you're, you're like, whatever. It's an addict that's sad or whatever. And then they always do this, and this fucks me up. Then at some point, it, the parents or someone who knows the person. Tells the story of them when they were kids. When they were a little life. innocent kid. And they and show the pictures and the videos. Yeah. And then something happens and then the person goes, and you're just like. Some tragic event and then they just spiraled out of control. And then you're just like, oh, oh. somebody would have just, you know, hugged them. Oh, yeah. And you think about your kids. Like, yeah. Oh, what, have I done anything that's going to push them in that direction? Oh, my God. What if that happened? <laughs> yeah, what would I, hate, I do? I hate shows like that. Yeah, like you see the parents where the kid is like living in their house. And the parent is like enabling them, driving mm -hmm. them places and whatever. And before I had kids, I would be like, kick him out, kick him the fuck out and he'll hit rock bottom. And then, right. That's the objective thing to do. Yeah. Now that I have kids, I'm like, I don't know if I could like kick my kid out onto the street using dirty needles, living homeless. And or do I keep him in my house, which yeah. enables them? Mm -hmm. What a shitty situation to be in. Yeah. So that right there, I have to like pace. It's like one episode every six months because it ruins me. Yeah, yeah, I don't for, watch for a lot way of stuff long. like that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Katrina and I watch uh, almost everything the same, which is a blessing and a curse, right? You think it's a blessing because it's like, oh, you have everything in common, so you guys always enjoy. But then the curse is, I can't ever watch TV. You can't watch it when she's gone, right? Yeah. Do you ever cheat on her? Watch yeah. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course, I have to do that. You know, like, and pretend you haven't. Yeah, watched like, it, oh my god, works. I can't believe you did that. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your phone. You're not watching. Twist. How do you know? Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. how does he catch on? Yeah, yeah. No, she she knows. She knows if I've watched it or what like that. But yeah, no. So we watch most everything. There's certain things like, so she like, uh, she'll watch a murder mystery type of thing with me, but it can't be the last show that we watch. 
Uh, so she has to watch. Oh, does it get her too stressed out? Yeah. Bed? So like yeah. we were watching that series that I told you guys about, the Dirty John one or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it, that's so, that's such negative energy yeah. in it that she needs to watch like something lighthearted. So what will happen if I like like I really wanted to watch that the other night? And I'm like, I want to I want to finish it. We're almost done with the series. Let's watch let's watch an episode tonight. And she's like, ah, oh, it's already like nine. That'll be the last thing we watch. And I'm like, come on. So she'll rally. But then when we go to bed, she'll be on her iPhone watching like a. A sitcom to just kind of calm her brain down and get out of that space where I don't have a problem. I just go right to bed. So do I. Yeah, I, I do that too. Yeah, yeah, I made that mistake a couple times with um, like suspenseful, slightly twisted type of like series. Not super horror because Jessica won't watch, uh, you know, really scary stuff. But what was that series, Broken Mirror? Right? Was that yeah. the one on Netflix? Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Black Mirror. And some of those episodes, like they get those you twisted, a little dude. eerie. They get you thinking, yeah, or a little whatever. too close. And I made that mistake once. I'm like, no, no, this is really cool. And you know, of course, she gets into it because you want to know what's going on. Yeah. And I we watched the one where the 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 guy had the assistant that was his clone in his phone. Remember that or the girl? Oh yeah, I saw that. and she was doing everything that she wanted. But at first, because it's an actual clone, you think that's you inside the phone, and the per and the the assistant didn't want to listen. Let me out! Get me out of the phone! So she does this thing on the app where it simulates six months of just nothing. So they have to like so they're punished essentially, and then they turn it back on a couple minutes later, and the person is obviously like because they were six months with nothing. Now they're like, I'll do whatever you tell me. Well, anyway. Really twisted, right? Yeah. We watched that shit, and that was it, man. She didn't sleep all night. The next day, just she was all weird about it. I'm like, never again. <laughs> now we have to end with something like Family Guy or The well, Simpsons. Speaking of like sleep, that. dude. Uh, so I got woken up. This was like uh, not last night, but the night before. And uh, we we've had some new noises and things to account for, and uh, oh, yeah. you know, and I'm 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 trying to to walk a perimeter around the house and kind of get acclimated, you know, to the new space. And, um, so there's, you know, fruit trees and there's different things and I'm sure there's deer and all kinds of animals that are going to be coming through or whatever. Uh, but it's like, it's a little freaky, like it gets like real dark. And so our spotlights come on every time there's like some crazy movement outside. And it, of course it comes on and whatever. And I didn't think much of it, but then I hear a dunk like right on our window. And, and then I was like, wow, that was loud and I just got up and I'm like, man, I should check this out. And I kind of come outside, come back in, hear it again. Doom, doom, doom. A what? Bat, a bat. Like, like it seriously sounded like somebody was throwing fruit at, at my window. And I was like, and I started to get like, oh, <laughs> who's out there? You know, like I'm gonna like, you know, like try to like pump myself up. What I'm is scared. it you grab? You know? What is it the thing you grab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You grab you, something before you walk. Oh, bro, I, dude, I have a, one of those Indian yeah. clubs under my bed. Oh, is that I, 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 <laughs> for that reason, dude, I used to grab that and right away, you know, and I got. You know, that's a good. That's I a got good a one. shotgun. I'm gonna fucking mobility, you bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I got that. That's like you know worst case scenario, but that's my go to. Yeah. Uh, so I'm grabbing that. I'm going back out on my deck, and I'm just like, oh, you know, who's out there? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear this. <laughs> In this huge June bug, like like just like dive bombs me. Oh, and I'm like, oh, what, what? was that? Comes right back at me because I have a flashlight and it, it sees the light, and so it's coming right at me. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh my just god, ducked right last second, get inside, slam the door. <laughs> I was like, those, those are those big ones that look like beetles. Yes, they it was this big green uh, June bug, and it was slamming itself into our. Uh, window because the, the light right yeah attracted the, the light, light kept coming on and it would just get attracted to it oh wow oh so imagine so being an intruder and you see a guy walk out with like a bowling pin you know what I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the fuck is super this? intimidating yeah. like you know yeah. my boxers <laughs> <laughs> oh dude yeah. my dad sure, like <laughs> so my dad used to get he used to he, he used to have a bed right my parents used to have a bed and they'd have these huge bed posts and that would be usually the first thing that he grabbed would be the bed post and it's this big wooden and you'd see my dad, you know, get out of the room all of a sudden in his little Italian Speedo underwear, walk around with it, right? <laughs> it's, but a, one, it's a family thing. <laughs> one time, one time, so I had some, we had some family visiting from Chicago. And so we have a lot of cousins from over there, right? And these were all guys in their 20s. And at the time, my dad was probably, probably in his late 20s as well, because I was probably around 10, 10 years old, maybe. So my dad might have been like 29. Yeah. And they were hanging out, you know, having dinner, having a good time. Well, anyway, we all go home, go to bed. These guys go out. They're all a bunch of single dudes in their 20s. They go out, and I guess they went and got drunk, had a good time. And they thought, 
what a great idea if we play a prank on you know Dominic. That's my dad, right? Let's right. go play a prank on him. So they come. This is like two o'clock in the morning. So they come to my my house and they start throwing like pebbles and shit at the windows and then uh, you know they're banging on the walls. Well, anyway. <laughs> This was not good. This all ended almost badly. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a bad idea. So my dad's, I mean, he's armed, right? So he he he. At first, he's got the 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 club thing, and then he he, they, he hears them banging on the garage door, uh, and he's like, "Someone's trying to break oh, in." Oh no! Yeah. So he gets his handgun, and he goes out with the handgun, and he's standing behind the garage door, and this is these are the old school garage doors, not the ones that kind of go up like this, but the ones you have to swing open. Yeah. You yeah. know. So my dad's holding the bottom of it. And he's got the handgun, and he's waiting to hear another bang to see what's going on. <laughs> anyway, my cousin, do 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 do, bangs on it. He swings it open, and he fires the gun in the air. No way. Yeah, just to kind of scare him. Yeah. That was my dad's whatever. Wow. So he's like, boom, and my cut, and it was like next to my cousin's face. Oh and my god, dude, his face turned white, and my dad's like, you fucking. Idiot. He goes, You know, I have kids. You're banging on my two in the morning. Like, I could have. What do you think was like, what happen? the hell is wrong with you? It's just, like, now yeah, it's a funny yeah. story, but oh right. my oh, God. Wow. Dude, that yeah. That's that dumb 20 year old idea. You know what I'm saying? When you're that young and you're just like, You know, it'd be a little funny. Yeah. And you're like, Didn't think that all the way through, did you, guy? No. The last, no. I'm telling you right now, the last thing you get shot, dude. you ever do yep. is you go and you play a prank like that on a man with kids. Yep. Because. Yes. Bad you're, <laughs> oh, you're gonna bro. walk into a hornet's nest. What takes over is not logic, and it becomes we're gonna kill whatever's in the way. Yeah. So wow. it's, anyway, yeah, it's a funny. It's a now it's a funny story. Yeah, funny about. now, but funny, I guarantee yeah. that was fucking not funny at all at oh, that time. Yeah. And it was, just, I, I you know, I remember as a little kid, I, I wasn't out, so I didn't see it all. But I remember, you know, hearing bang bang. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> What's going on? And then I hear yelling because my dad's hammering him. Like, oh, how God. dare you guys? You know, do that kind yeah, of shit. What a bad idea. Yeah, don't do that. But yeah, as a, as a as a, I mean, I I know as a and see now where you're living, you're you've got all kinds of shit that can make noise. So yeah, you got a little more to that, isolated bro. too. So yeah, I've just been trying to. Um, and, and it's I was in that state. Like I was getting all ramped up. Like oh, I'm gonna do something. You know, <laughs> like. But uh, thankfully, it's just a bug. How close is the next neighbor? So. I mean, they're not that far down. They're probably like, I don't know, like maybe like two houses over uh, in length, but um, they're down a hill. So you have to go down this huge driveway just to get So I don't see anybody, really. It yeah. feels like I'm on an island, like surrounded by redwoods, which is rad. It's really quiet, but um, you do have to walk uh, you know, quite a ways to get to another uh, neighbor. So basically, if you hear a noise yeah. and you think you think it's a person – it's not like a neighbor or something. You're yeah, thinking. You're thinking it, somebody's. I'm thinking like some, yeah, you know, some straggler, or some yeah, homeless somebody, person. Yeah, somebody's or not supposed to be. In a, yeah, somebody would get a up homeless no person good. out there in the woods. Would you? Is that happen? I mean, do they do? You know, they really? Go camp, they go camp. Even out. at yeah, your other camp. house, do you, did you guys get homeless people like coming near your house? Yeah, remember I I told you guys like there was uh, like fire. Uh, there there's oh. people like creating like these little campsites, and um, it was a fire hazard, and so. Uh, and we had crime happening, like some break-ins. It turns out it was one of the neighbor's kids and his friends, stupid idiot kids that were doing it. But I thought it was the homeless encampments because I knew they were there because it was a quarry. Um, and so I went there with my dog and, you know, I, I let them know my presence. Let's just put it that way. Uh, knocked over a few tents and, you know, <laughs> it took some pictures of people and, and whatnot and, uh, wow, let them bro. know like, uh, this it is, wasn't them. this is my territory <laughs> and it wasn't even them. <laughs> you, see guy, you see him fucking coming and kicking tents down. Poor it's eight. like one in the morning guys, like some bro, bums trying to poor, sleep. Poor hippie, you know, kid. He's I like, like Sal said, dude, I got kids. Like, you, yeah. you, you know, you ever and, fucking come around my house listen here. you're gonna oh, leave man. you're gonna leave hot coal even, even then they left like you know hot still like, like burning wood yeah uh, and it's like it's a fire hazard and like look if you're gonna be responsible for causing a forest fire here like i'm gonna raise hell with you it is a very interesting feeling when you start to feel whether you're wrong or right perceive a, a threat to your kids it's yeah a, it's a very i remember is it's it, a protective mechanism that just takes over. i remember as a new dad it was a new feeling i mean i was always protective of you know if i my girlfriend or my you know my siblings but it was a completely new feeling. It's such a new feeling. Obviously, I'm, this is something I'm going through for the first time, right? So I totally can resonate with the story that I trip out. Like, I can watch a show, and if, if, if a movie has something where, like, 
a kid is in danger yeah. or like instantly my mind will can start to play that and I can get like super angry right there. That, yeah. That's so weird to me. Like I don't have anything I can connect that to right. or that I've experienced that other than that right now. But I can actually sit there. And you didn't have those feelings no. before you had no. a kid, right? Me either. No. And even if you got asked me to play a game and think like, oh, what do you think if you had a son? Like I, you couldn't get me to connect to that much anger where right now, like on the spot, you mm -hmm. can get me to like, Imagine if somebody kidnapped your child and did this. No, like, oh. I, can, I can go to Shark Eyes real yeah, quick. Yeah, weird, dude. It's a, it's a, it's a really interesting uh, connection that we have it's, automatically. It's you know? very strange. The first time I really uh, identified it was I've told you guys this before. I was in bed and and it was windy outside and it blew. We had a um, you know one of those like patio tables with an umbrella. The table was glass and the wind blew the umbrella so hard that it shattered the glass table and oh, it wow. sounded like. Somebody broke in, breaking in the window into the house, yeah. and I re and it was the weirdest feeling. And my son was he was maybe my oldest, right? So this was years ago. He was maybe seven months old. I had never felt this exact feeling, and I literally was down the stairs, and the bed sheets came with me because I went down so fast. And I don't think I stepped on the stairs. I think I jumped just like down the stairs. <laughs> and the feeling that I had in my body was so foreign to me. And the best way I could describe it for anybody who's never experienced this was, it could have been a grizzly bear. Yeah, it could have been an alien. You're going it could have straight been, at it. it <laughs> I, I yeah. literally was going, it was going to go through whatever was in front of me. And I wasn't even fully aware of it until I stopped, realized what happened. Right. And then I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. I just, and I see the bed sheets up, you know, <laughs> dragging down the stairs of me, still attached to me. And I'm down there and I'm, rrr, rrr, you know, I got this like, really where, good. Where am I? <laughs> yeah, Why do I have a knife in my hand? I was like, whoa, man. Yeah. That's, and that's why when I told this story to my dad, like as a kid, I didn't get it. I get it now. Like, you don't do that, dude. That's like, you might, no. you might get what you don't want. You know, no, it's wild. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying the show. Look, if you have kids and you listen to Mind Pump, you're probably very interested in their health. You want your kids to be healthy, to have good strength, good immune systems. And so the type of food that you feed your kids is very important, especially your babies. This is why we started working with a company called Serenity Kids. They make some of the best baby food we've seen anywhere. We're talking about grass-fed meats, organic vegetables, bone broth added, grain-free snacks. Some of the It's literally some of the best stuff we found for children. It's also the only baby food that I feed my 10-month-old son. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a discount. So if you're interested, head over to MySerenityKids.com and use the code MP20. So that's MP20 with no space for 20% off your entire order. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is Tony from New Orleans. Hey, hey Tony. How hey, can we help Tony. you? <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, just discovered you guys a few months ago, and I've been binging ever since. Um, no pun intended. I have a question on nutrition. Um, I am a former um, long course endurance athlete, and um, I got COVID. And after that, I really suffered. I could not run anymore. Um, Adam, I know you're kind of dealing with this right now, too. Um, I went from running 20 miles one week to getting the Rona next week i couldn't do anything i couldn't even make it to the end of the block and it was months like that so i just kind of gave it up i started walking and i enjoyed it i really enjoyed it and i didn't miss all that time i'd spend running biking um but my weight stopped dropping and um so i was like well let me try macros i've been at 1500 macros i mean calories for about six months and i'm not really seeing any change on the scale um, I can see my body changing, um, but the scale isn't moving. Um, so I didn't know if maybe I should try something else um, and maybe add some more calories, um, maybe try to go back to intuitive eating. I did lose 25 pounds doing that. Um, just kind of need some some guidance with uh, that. Tony, uh, real quick, uh, can I, I, know, I know this is normally uh, – Nobody likes to hear hear this or be asked this, but I'm curious for this question because you said 1,500 calories. Uh, well, how tall are you and how much do you weigh? I'm 5'6", and I'm probably sitting at about 140 after um, all my hurricane snacks. We had to evacuate last week from the Hurricane Ida, so I'm probably sitting about 140, 5'6", uh, and I'm 43. 
And I, I think I read that you're also doing 10,000 plus steps a day. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It sounds like we need more calories. Yeah. Are you so, in, something we need to go on a little bit of a bulk for a little bit? And you're doing MAPS anabolic or uh, following yes, one of our programs? Yes. I love it. It's bringing me back to like the one thing I miss about doing Ironmans is having a plan and being able to check things off and being able to record, you know, stats. I love that stuff. So I'm loving it. Excellent. Well, okay. So you, you said something interesting to me. You said you can see that your body is changing, but the scale isn't moving. Right. So usually with this, and it sounded like it was a positive change. It didn't sound like you meant your body's changing in a negative way. Am I correct? Right, right, right. Okay, so here's what's probably happening. Um, you're probably building muscle and burning body fat. That's the reason why the scale isn't moving. And remember, muscle is much more dense than body fat. So if you were to gain you know, eight pounds of lean body mass and lose eight pounds of body fat, you'd still be smaller. Muscle takes up about roughly two thirds of the space uh, that body fat would take. So you would lose you know, something like 25% size in terms of volume but of course, you have more muscle, you have a faster metabolism, uh, things are tighter, more sculpted. 140 pounds at 5'6 is not bad at all. Um, and by the way, I, I know you can't see us because we turned off your, your camera, but we, I can see you. Did you really say you're 43 years old? Yes. Yeah, you look really yes. good. I would, I would get you, Thank you very 10 much. years younger. So, all right. So Thank here's you. the deal. I think what you should do, I think you're on the right track. I think you should stop weighing yourself. I think that's messing with your head a little bit. Totally. To continue focusing on MAPS anabolic, building strength. That's a great sign. Your calories are 1,500, which is low. Um, now, it makes sense considering your past. Because of all the endurance training that you did, you've probably developed a very efficient metabolism. So this isn't a good or bad thing. It just means that your body got really good at utilizing calories in an efficient way. That's probably one of the reasons why you, you got really good at your endurance sports. But now the goal is to reduce efficiency or, uh, you know, uh, stated differently, speed up your metabolism. So what I think you should do is continue the resistance training, focusing on strength. And I want you to bump your calories up very slowly. I mean, you could go up a hundred calories a day, stick to that for a couple weeks, see how things are, bump up another hundred calories, and you should see your strength go up. Now, as far as weight on the scale is concerned, I don't think we should check that for at least a couple months. So for eight weeks, don't worry about that. Just worry about strength. Worry about how you feel in your body, posture. You know, when you put your hands on yourself, like, wow, I feel more sculpted here. I feel tighter here. Is there anybody in your life that is honest and objective? Somebody that is, you know, that really cares about your health and would give you an honest opinion about how you're doing. Like, for example, my wife would do that for me. She would tell me, wow, you're looking really healthy or very good. Do you have someone like that? Yeah, I think my husband would do that. Um, they're just kind of over it. My whole family is kind of over me measuring everything to the gram. You know, they're oh, yeah. they're they're really sick of it. Um, but he would be honest with me. Okay, good. So do what I'm saying, and then don't ask don't ask any questions. I'm sure they're going to be happy to see you not so you know probably in their words obsessed with all the measuring and stuff. And then I'm pretty sure you'll get the occasional like, huh honey, your butt looks really good, or wow, you look tighter, or I notice your energy is really good. Those are all really, really good uh, signs. But for yourself, take the scale, and literally, this is going to be your discipline. Don't weigh yourself. Just stop weighing. Just eight weeks. Time it for eight weeks, because I know you're going to need a time, because you're probably going to drive yourself crazy. And <laughs> yeah. then bump the calories a little bit and focus on strength. The fact that your body's changing visibly, but the scale isn't moving, that's a great sign. And your body weight isn't high. This would be different if you were like 180 pounds. 140 at 5.6, not bad at all. So your body fat percentage is probably in a very healthy range uh, to begin with. Tony, do you have um, our intuitive eating guide? I do. Okay. I do. Okay, good. Because ultimately, this is where we'd want to get. Now, because we're telling you to add calories, uh, you're probably going to have to weigh and measure to kind of figure out where you're currently at. But I mean, in a perfect world, a client with the goals that you have, I would love to see you get up towards like 2,500 calories. Yeah, we're totally possible. Yeah. Totally possible. That would be outstanding. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it might sound a little crazy, but you know, Sal hit it right. I mean, you've, you've done, you've trained for so long consistently that you've just, you've trained your body to be very efficient with calories. Now that you've switched to something like MAPS Anabolic, which by the way is the perfect program and ideally what you should be doing right now, the goal really should be, can I just keep slowly increasing these calories 
without. And so long as you feel good, uh, since we're not going to be using the scale at all, uh, stay on that course. And the goal should be, can I add more calories, keep getting stronger and not see a significant jump on the scale in eight weeks when I hop on there? Because uh, ultimately, I would love to see you know, for your height and weight, you know, to be around 2,500 calories, at least that's a really good place to be. And then that's when we would move into more of an intuitive style of eating where I would teach you to kind of lay off the paying attention to the calories. And are, stuff. You, are you consistent with the trigger sessions for MAPS Anabolic? Yes. I love them. I even, it's like a game to me to how to squeeze them in while I'm at work, you know, while nobody's looking awesome, into my perfect. cube. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect way awesome. to use them. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, do you have access to our private forum? I do. Okay, good. So I want you to uh, give us updates. Yeah, check in with us. Yeah, okay, and you're going to need this because uh, someone like you, eight weeks without weighing yourself, mm -hmm. you're going to. It's going to be a little bit torturous. Oh my god, I want to just check. I just want to see where I'm at. Or okay, I, I feel you're a little just bit. Want reassurance constantly through this whole. Process. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I, I can see. I can see. I'm going to have to put it away somewhere where I can't even see it. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. By the way, where'd you find us? You said you've only been listening for a couple months. Um, I, I think I was in a macros group on Facebook and somebody mentioned you guys and I'm listening every day now. I feel like, you know, we're kind of around the same ages and, you know, just talking back to stuff from the eighties and the other just great. I came for the fitness and I stayed for the memes and the conspiracy <laughs> theories. I, oh, love yeah, 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 that's right. I love it. Hey, Tony, are you, are you, I, I we're see your last the macro world. We, we didn't say your last name on the show, but I, I'm reading your, your last name. Are you a, you, you don't happen to be Italian, do, are you? I am. I'm Italian and my husband is as well. <laughs> oh. So we are, we are big uh, food people. You know, my whole family is, it's oh. been my whole life oh. food. I get it. I totally understand. You should have seen this weekend. We'd made sauce with my family. Uh, we do that once a year. And of course my mom is, you know, no, did she know that she'd known me forever, right? My whole life. What does she do? Uh, well, do you, are you sure you don't want this much pasta? I'm going to put it there. And if you don't want it, you can leave it, but you know, we don't want to throw it away. I'm like, all right, guilt trip lady. Yeah. I'll <laughs> eat all the pasta. Okay. Relax. You look hungry. <laughs> and I enjoy it the whole time. I appreciate you calling in, Tony. I think you're on the right track. You're doing a great job right yeah, now. Yeah. If you just do, you. do what we say, check in on the private form. You can tag us, uh, if you need that, okay. you know, that guidance the whole way. But you're on your way. I mean, it's it's totally going to happen. Thank you. And you guys don't think I need to add back cardio or at all? Absolutely not. No, no you're, you're, you're the, fine. Great. The goal would be to, to <laughs> and if walking's fine. So, you know, if, you, if yeah. you've created good habits around walking, the, but you're already getting 10,000 steps. So I feel good that you're, uh, you're moving around. Um, and if you felt like you wanted to go for longer walks or a hike on the weekend, I wouldn't be against that, especially as we're increasing calories. But the goal really is, get stronger, add calories. I mean, that's how we, and that's part of the reason why Sal is saying, get rid of the scale. We don't need that to measure those things. I just want to get, get, get the, get your food calories up and then get your strength up and we're winning. Sounds great. All right. Thanks, Tony. Thank you guys. You know, with the, I, I got a DM the other day about the metabolism boosting effects of, uh, of building muscle. And this reminded me, this question reminded me of it. And basically it was like, this study shows that gaining one pound of muscle doesn't necessarily equate to this many more calories burned and blah, blah, blah. And that's true that the, the math doesn't work perfectly, but that's not because building muscle doesn't speed up your metabolism. It always does. It's active tissue that your body has to support. And it's more expensive to support muscle than it is, for example, to support body fat. But there's also this range within calories that your body will burn or can burn with the same lean body mass. Okay, so essentially, let's say you have 150 pounds of lean body mass. There's a potential of calories within that that you can burn. You know, maybe I'll give you just arbitrary numbers. You could burn as much as, you know, 2,500 calories and as little as, let's say, 1,800 calories with the same lean body mass. There's so many things that happen within the metabolism that can make you more or less efficient, not necessarily needing to build muscle, but sending the signal to build muscle, eating in a particular way tells your body, we don't need to be so efficient with calories. And this is why a woman like this, you know, she could gain four more pounds of muscle, but continue on this pace. And four pounds of lean body mass is, is a decent amount of muscle to gain for, for a woman. She'll feel more sculpted and all that stuff. But within that, she could easily add a thousand calories a day to her metabolism. Well, it's exactly the opposite signal she's been sending her yes. body for a long period of time, which is so, 
psychologically challenging. And so that's why it's just, it's going to be a constant, you know, reiteration, you're doing the right thing. And to, to, to move that scale into the closet and to really trust, you know, that this new game plan is going to pay off in dividends. You know, that's just something you just need to keep pounding into a lot of these clients heads. She's actually in a really good place. The fact that she's been able to kick all that cardio and running and oh, move yeah. to a three day a week strength training program and not see significant gain on the scale already. Is, yeah, uh, it's she's already in, working. Yeah, she's in a great place. And then, and then the next goal would be just slowly increase those calories. But she's probably seeing exactly what what Sal was saying, which is the okay. I she's probably losing three pounds of body fat, and then she's building three pounds of muscle, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of maintaining. Especially if she thinks she she's feeling good and like her body's changing positively. Yep. So, our next caller is Mark from Toronto. Hey, what's up, Mark? How can we help you? What's going on, guys? Uh, it's got to say, as everyone does, you know, big fan of, of the podcast and everything. Thank you. Um, to really condense the question, um, in 2017, I was in the hospital with ulcerative colitis, came out 35 pounds lighter. Um, I was following a program for two and a half years. During that time, I was perma cutting. Um, at the two and a half year mark, I kind of felt like something needed to change. So I kind of set down some goals for myself. Um, kind of hitting like, you know, normal strength standards for uh, the key compound lifts and uh, long-term goals would definitely do some type of uh, men's physique show. Um, so what I've really struggled with is, is nutrition. I've been told to do so many things. Um, I cut aggressively, cut slowly um, or bulk because I haven't really spent much time building muscle. Um, so it's kind of been like a paralysis by analysis type of thing for me. Um, so I wanted to know, I guess, your guys' advice on what a uh, what I should do in terms of like a year structure or, you know, three months, six months type of thing. Okay. All right, Mark, how honest do you want me to be on a scale of one to 10? <laughs> 10, go up to 12, 10, 20. All right. All right. Um, so considering that you were in the hospital a couple of years ago with ulcer ulcerative colitis and you may have it under control. I'm not quite sure what your regime looks like, but I'm sure it includes uh, either immunosuppressive medications or, so, uh, you know, a change in diet. The absolute worst possible thing you could do is compete in physique or bodybuilding. Okay, um, the the food, the bulking, the cutting, the stress of the training, that combination is a perfect storm to cause uh, digestive issue flare ups. Uh, and I know you're young, but this is going to be something that you're going to deal with kind of for the rest of your life. And and there's a couple options. We can either keep it at bay or go through flare ups and. Typically, uh, each sub each subsequent flare up can be worse than the previous one, and we don't want to be in that situation. Okay, so my honest opinion is don't do that. Now, here's what I what I will say: you could still build muscle, you could still train, you could still look freaking amazing. The difference is going to be you're not going to be doing it in an aggressive way, like what competing is going to look like. There's not going to be a date that you need to get down to three percent body fat. There's not going to be an off season. Where you're bulking super aggressively. What I'm going to recommend someone like you do is first off, stick to the foods that you've now learned that don't cause issues with your, with your inflammation. So those are the foods you have to work with. I want you to lift weights in a way that, that is to build muscle. I think MAPS Anabolic would be a perfect workout program for you. Do three foundational workouts instead of two, do the trigger sessions. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do a very slow bulk, okay? Aggressive bulks have a tendency to cause uh, you know, inflammatory issues to flare up, especially with the digestive system. So rather than taking your total, your maintenance calories and having you add six or 700 or 800 or 1,000 calories to that, I'm going to have you add 200 calories to that. That's it. And that's plenty to add lean body mass. Now, the scale won't move up as quickly, but that's okay. We're looking at this long term. You also want to get lean. This is actually the perfect approach. So very slow bulk with a good building routine and then stick to the foods that you know that don't cause issues and do that for a while. Now, if you if you really, really, really want to do bodybuilding three, four years down the line, when this process is down pat, then I'd say we could probably consider it. But right now I'd say I don't, I, I probably the worst possible thing you could do is go and try to get on stage just from a health perspective. That'll set you back or, or, the, or at least the, the risk of setting you back is too high. Yeah, regardless if you decide to to bodybuild or not, you need to you need to build. 
I mean, uh, your age and probably your lifting experience and wanting to build a more impressive physique, uh, getting shredded and lean, getting shredded and lean will temporarily give you that look because anybody, anybody lean right now will look more muscular, but you'll want to put some more mass on your frame and you'll want to get to a place where you're a, a little bit higher calorie intake. So personally, I would love to see like a four on one off where you run like a bulk for four weeks and then you interrupt that with a one week cut four weeks on a bulking cut for one week. Um, you could do it where you go two weeks with a one to two day interruption. That's fine too. Um, but something like that where we're focused more on bulking, but then we do we interrupt it with a, a mini cut uh, and then focus on building strength. I'm with Sal. I think anabolic is the first program I have you run and then maybe jump you to aesthetic unless we have some mobility issues or joint stuff going on. Then I would stress you to go to performance first. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds great. Yeah. And Mark, I see in your question that you're, you're consuming between 1800 to 1500 calories currently. Uh, right now it's up to 2,500. I got it to a comfortable rate. Um, I kind of, I feel like kind of a little depressed when I have to eat like 1800. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 No, you're, you, listen, you're on the right track. You're young. Stay the course. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you, you the priority is going to be staying healthy because if you can re if you can maintain your current level of inflammation if you can prevent yourself from having any more digestive type issue or flare ups you'll be able to continue to get stronger and build muscle for a long time you'll have a great time working out what you don't want to do is and I did this a long time I didn't have uh, ulcerative colitis but I I I did have I do still have gut issues and I've worked with clients uh, just like you and it's the worst part. You know this. You've already gone through it once. You could get so far, you have a flare up, you just might as well erase everything. And now you're totally screwed. And you don't want to deal with that, right? You want to kind of do it slowly and avoid that huge uh, you know, roadblock that can potentially happen. And doing a sport that requires you to extreme diet is just flirting with that. Oh, totally. So that's it's not necessarily you can't do bodybuilding. You can't build this amazing physique. It's just if you put yourself in a position where you have to present your physique on a date and follow like a strict program versus listening to your body and and trying to make adjustments that way, you're you're more likely to do something that's going to flare it up. Yeah. Mark, do you have do you have access to Maps Anabolic? Uh no, currently not. Okay, we're going to send that to you. Also, I'd like to put you in our forum. Yeah, good call. Because uh, I'd like to follow up with you. So when you go on our private forum. You could ask questions in there. You could tag us um, just so you have some support along the way uh, because uh, I think this is very interesting. I'd like to see how how well you do moving forward. Yeah, honestly, that sounds amazing. I kind of want to, uh, you know, build a great physique and, and show people that, you know, if you have UC or Crohn's or any sort of um, IBS, you know, you can still, you know, build a, a great body. Bro, you could do that without I'm, competing. You definitely you, can do that. that you, yeah, you just do what Sal always talks about on the show, which is you you chase health. Yeah. You chase the health. The, aesthetic, the, the aesthetics will follow. If you go after aesthetics, you may you might not necessarily get their health. Yeah, and what looks impressive in real life is like, you know, you could totally get, you know, 7 8% body fat very healthy. Getting on stage is like 3% body fat. I'm going to tell you something right now. In person, that doesn't look very impressive. In person, you look like you're dying. So don't worry about the stage. You know, you want to look good in real life. 8% is like incredible. You got muscle fullness. You got the six pack. You look great. And you didn't have to like sacrifice your health to get there. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds freaking fantastic. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Thank you guys. Take it easy. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough position, man. It's like, you got a young guy and he's like, I just want to get on stage and compete. Right. I know. And I tell you what, if you have any health issues, either physical, mental, or psychological, one of the worst possible sports you could do is get yourself to a super shredded, get on stage, have people judge you by yeah. the way you look. It's like nitro a on like a, you know, an engine that has a crack. Now, that being said, this is also what's inspiring him to do it, though. Totally. I also like the motivation. Like, he's wanting to do it to, to inspire others that, listen, you can be in this position and still build this amazing body. But I think you have to... You have to be focused around your health first and then allow that to follow versus like, oh, okay, this is that important to be, get on stage in eight weeks or whatever. Yeah, I just, I know so many people that were on the edge of, yeah. you know, dysfunction with most, their body most and, of alarm. and then they compete and it's like, oh my gosh, that ruined me. Or their body is, oh, you know, it's a little bit inflamed or I'm, you know, I get to, and then they go compete and it's like, 
fucking backwards. Well, and I, so I, extreme. I get the sense too, like when you're younger, you want to prove that in spite of all challenges totally. in sure. front of you, you want to prove to everybody you can get to this like extreme version. But, uh, you know, in terms of it being something that you may exacerbate or make worse, like later on in life, like you got to consider that it's a health issue that we need to address and that's going to pay you the most that could be a powerful tool though when wielded correctly oh yeah i mean that's the fact that that's a major motivator uh and if he can just direct it the right it's a place noble way yeah to look yeah. at it and but. if he's got if he's got good guidance i mean i think we can get him in that direction and i think that's a it's a good goal to have yeah and just remember he's in his 20s remember what you were like in your 20s yeah. i know what i was oh like. yeah dude yeah. it's hard to tell me to slow down so yeah. kids are kids are smarter today you know we have, yeah. we have access to way more information i think so yeah our next caller is Jake from Iowa. Hey, what's up, Jake? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to be on the show today. Uh, I'm a newer listener, um, but obviously I really uh, like your guys' content, and I wanted to reach out for some advice here. Uh, so my question is, um, I've been uh, training for a marathon here, and I'm just about finished up with an 18-week program, and I'm just looking for a little advice on uh, – once I'm done with that, I want to switch into uh, more of a heavy lifting program. Um, I bought a couple of your guys' programs and uh, just looking for a little bit of advice on the transition from uh, heavy cardio into uh, lifting. Oh, yeah. This is a fun transition, dude. Uh, it's great because what you'll, if you do this right, what you'll notice is just muscle gain right. and strength um, You know, kind of come on your body and you shouldn't gain uh, really any body fat. In, fa in fact, you may notice that you're actually getting leaner as you're building muscle. So it's a really fun transition, very different feeling than being an endurance athlete. So the, nice. which you said you had programs of ours, which ones do you have? Um, I have anabolic and aesthetic. I got the skinny guy bundle. Oh, perfect. I, oh, I've, that's... I've never, um, been a, uh, a big weight room guy, uh, my whole life. So that's the place to start. Go MAPS Anabolic, start in pre-phase, do pre-phase for about four weeks, three foundational workouts a week, then move into phase one, keep the three foundational workouts a week, throw in the trigger sessions, follow the program as laid out. That is going to be absolutely perfect uh, for someone like you. Any idea where your, uh, your calorie intake is right now? Yeah. So I'm at like 2,500 okay. a day. I'm a little worried about the eating part. No, don't, I know so I'm probably I, honestly don't stress that. I think uh, your your weight's at 175 right now, right? Yeah, I probably dropped down a little bit more, but yeah, okay, pretty close. So, so I mean, I would actually allow just the the natural transition of moving out of all the marathon running and then really focusing on resistance training and not really changing your eating at, at, to see how the body just responds. What what you might see is that you're not burning as much. So, of course, that's a calorie surplus, but it might be just the right amount of extra calories to help you build. And so I would actually just kind of hang out where you are calorie-wise and just focus on MAPS Anabolic. Make sure you don't skip the trigger sessions. Do those in there. That'll that'll help in keeping that movement. Now, I'm assuming you probably are kind of a, an active person, out even outside the marathon running, because I, I wouldn't want to see you go from you know, running 30 miles a week to all of a sudden sitting at a desk and never moving. Are you, are you fairly active outside of even your, your training? Um, well, I do have a desk job and I'm there a lot. And, uh, so that's kind of why I first took up the running was to get a lot more calories and movement. Um, so I'm, I, I don't know if I need to throw in a little walking too, yeah. or. Yeah. So, so, so maybe walk, walk after your meals. I mean, that's, you know, go, go get it. And it doesn't need to be super long. Just try and make a habit of, you know, uh, if you can go take a nice 10 to 20 minute walk, uh, after meals. Uh, I think with, with that, um, you should be, you should be fine. I don't think there's any, I don't think, I don't think you're going to need to do cardio to cancel out. I think your body's actually going to respond really well. The fact that like you a have. Sponge. Yeah. The fact that you haven't, it's, a, it's actually going to work to our benefit that you have never been a real heavy strength training guy. Uh, your body's going to respond really well to MAPS Anabolic, and you're going to need the additional calories. So the fact that you're up in that 2,500 range, I, I, I like where you're at. Yeah. And Jake, another thing too, when you switch to MAPS Anabolic pre-phase, the pre-phase is meant to get your body ready to lift. So after your marathon, you definitely want to take some time off, maybe a few days, four or five days, then get into the pre-phase, and then treat the exercises like practice. So don't go into the gym and look at the exercise and be like, I'm going to work out today. Go in there and be like, I'm going to practice squats. I'm going to practice bench press. I'm going to practice deadlift. I'm going to practice 
rows and just get better at them and do that for about four weeks, then move into phase one and then you can start to push it a little bit. But you're going to build muscle right out the gates. Just practicing those exercises in that way is going to send the signal uh, to build muscle. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. No problem. You guys have any experience like with a, cause he's kind of a young man. You ever work with a young man who went oh, yeah. from endurance to strength? Yeah. yeah. Dude, he's going to, he's going to blow it's up a massive transformation, like right out of the gates. But again, like, you know, you have to take your time and really like, you know, allow that transition to happen and, and feed your body along the process. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? So, you know, um, when you used to compete at him mm -hmm. and after a show you would eat a bunch yeah. and it would just go straight to muscle. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. I had a, uh, a young man that I trained very similar to this, and I'll never forget, he stopped the marathon training. We went to two or three days a week of full body training, and his body weight for a, for a, for a while hovered at the same, but mm -hmm. boy, he looked way different. Yeah, like all of a sudden, he completely went- completely recomped. Like, oh, yeah. oh, he went from skinny fat kind of to like all of a sudden getting really chiseled, and it was tripping him out. He's like, I'm getting, like I'm building muscle like it feels like nothing. I said, well, this is going to last forever. But it's because you're switching so drastically. Your body's like a sponge right now. Yeah, and I mm -hmm. think that uh, I wouldn't mess with his calories right now. Yeah, keep them the same. Yeah, keep them right where they're at, and let's just watch how what happens, right? And I just like that analogy you gave. That's I think the initial couple of weeks he's going to feel like that. I think his body has never been able to yeah. hang on, have have all those extra calories. They're putting put to work. You're going training for a marathon. You're only eating 2,500 calories. That shit's all getting used. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's Your getting glorious used. newbie gains. Yeah, his body's going to go like, oh, we got some stored energy here. And then he's going to send a signal to build muscle. And it's like, oh, this is where this is going to go. Totally. So I think he's going to see great results. Did he, did he say if he was in the form or not? Did I? Did we ask that or no? We did not ask him that. So well, maybe throw him in there, Doug. Yeah, you, give yeah. him a little surprise. Yeah. yeah tell, him it's from, uh, tell him it's from Sal. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Our next caller is Chase from Tennessee. Hey, what's up, Chase? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks uh, for having me. Thanks for all you do. Hey, I um, just started MAPS Anabolic, uh, well, three weeks ago. So I am about to transition from the pre-phase to phase one. Um, I want to get, you know, the highest quality workout I can from, well, each workout, but especially each phase from the beginning. So I'm wondering if there's a way to avoid sort of trial and erroring my way through um, how to calculate what, how much to uh, increase my intensity. So for instance, if I'm squatting, 165 for 12 reps in the pre-phase, but I'm aiming for six, uh, four to six reps of a squat in phase one. What's a good way to determine how much weight to try to go for? If I can, if I've got, you know, two to three reps left in the tank at 165, at 12 reps, uh, how do I calculate to go for four to six? No, that's a, that's a really, really good question. So Chase, are you an engineer? What do you do for work? I am a professor very far away from anything like engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. All right. So here's what you do. You take pi and you take, you multiply it by the <laughs> square root. Sure. Yeah. I, I work with that all the time. Yeah. There's that. Okay. Solve so for X. Yeah. No, all, all joking aside, there's a lot of formulas that you could be. And here's the problem. None of them are super accurate per person. Unfortunately, it is going to be kind of trying it out, but here's what I want to, here's how I want to help you out. The feeling out process is not a waste. In fact, that that's actually a good part of entering into phase one. One of the reasons why phase one, two, and three are about three weeks is it honestly takes about a week to get into the state of mind, get into the feel of heavy lifting, find the weights. That first week, by the way, still builds muscle and builds strength. By, by the second week, you're much more fine-tuned. By the third week, you're, the intensity is much higher, and then you move into a new phase. So what I want you to do you said 165 for 12. Uh, I would do the first set with 185, see how that feels, and then go from there uh, within that first week. And it's not a, it's not a waste. You're not taking – in. Uh, the more you do this, the easier it will be for you to predict the weight that you can use. But the formulas, in my experience, more often than not, just put people in the wrong direction because they're just – not super accurate on an individual basis. Not to mention that, I mean, you also are doing two in the tank. So that's the beauty of that is, you know, if you go, oh man, I just, I just did that set and I easily could have done four more reps. Cool. Slap some more weight on there. And then you slap more weight on there and then you go, oh, wow. 
I only had like one in the tank. Okay, back off a little bit. I mean, that's what's nice about giving yourself a cushion is like, it's yeah. not going to hurt you. It's if, and flow. Yeah, some sets you go over a little bit like that. But what you're going to find and what's wrong with the formulas is that that could change uh, by how you woke up that morning or how you slept, where your calorie intake is for that day. If you um, had a fight with your significant other, yeah. like all kinds of factors play you into you may that. Know, yeah. You know, may notice the difference in throughout the workout, maybe the beginning of the workout, you tend to have way more energy versus the end of the workout or vice versa. I mean, there's so many other variables. And part of, I think, getting good at all this is actually just practicing all that and learning to, to feel it out. And the difference of you, I'll just tell you right now, the difference of you giving a set 20% or 30% more effort is is uh not going to make the difference. It's you it's nothing you're it's splitting hairs. I was I was teasing you about asking if you're an engineer cuz it's like this is totally like one of my engineer clients would ask me like they want to mm -hmm. know, "Adam, we're going to do this. I want every ounce of effort I can get out of each set. I want to maximize it. So how do we mathematically break that down and figure it out?" And I totally respect that and get that, but it's it's actually not that's not as big of a deal as you think it is. You maintaining your caloric intake where it should be, you being consistent, you sticking to the program, like that stuff is going to matter so much more than how much, you know, north of 10 or 15 pounds of where you could have went on the bar is going to make a difference. Yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, beforehand, uh, I was guilty of like really trying to make sure like that first set was really intensive and I was making sure that I was my weight matched exactly like, you know, what I was capable of. And then you mature because of experience and lots of practice at this and realize less is always, you know, better, a better approach to get through. And, and you have to really account for those other sets that are going to precede that. And then getting closer to that just takes time and practice and, and uh, being familiar with what's in front of you. You just reminded me, Justin, of actually a, a tip I used to give clients around this too. There's nothing, Chase, that that says that you can't slow the tempo down when you get down to the last four or five. So let's mm -hmm. say you underestimated the weight and you're like, oh shit, I could have easily done 225 and I only put 185 on the bar. And you can tell by the way it's moving, you're on, you're on rep six and you're about, and you know, you're heading to 10. You're like, 10 is going to be easy. Okay. Well, those last four, I mean, make your negative two to three seconds longer or pause at the bottom for a second and start, so start to use use other tools that you have. Great, it, great tip. Yeah, just slow down the tempo on that, um, and and not don't worry so much about the weight. You'll know as you're going through the the set if it was too light of weight you put on there, and then hey, here's a great time to slow down tempo. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, man. And you already have access to Maps Anabolic, right? Yeah, I was. Uh, I think you you guys recommend going performance after that, or yeah, Maps Performance is a good follow. I forget what you're. So here's the deal. Yeah. I'm going to, I'll send yeah, you sure. maps. I'm going to send you maps performance just so you have something to go straight into. It sounds like this is kind of a new thing for you since you're in preface. So I'm, I'm excited to hear about your, your progress throughout this whole process. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that so much. And yeah, I've, uh, the, the closest I got to athletics growing up was, um, well, it wasn't chess club, but it wasn't much better either. So <laughs> no, this has been, um, it's new to me, but, but it's, it's going great so far. So thanks. Awesome. awesome. No problem. Jason. Thanks, Chase. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's, here's the, there's, there's two sides of metrics that you see. There's a, there's great benefits to it because it can start you off on the right path. It's a little bit of a roadmap. You know, if you have, if you know nothing at all, it'll, point in the right direction. But here's the bad side of it is that it can also take you out of your body when you start to obsess mm -hmm. over metrics. And I've seen it so many times where someone's like, but I'm supposed to be at 60% of my one rep max. And I'm, you know, your form right. is bad. You're not lifting it properly. It's obviously wrong, but they stick too much to it. Or I'm supposed to eat these foods. So I'm going to stick to this, but yeah, what, but you're constipated, you're bloated, you don't feel good. So you know, metrics are good, but don't let them take you outside of your body because then they become bad. It's just the framework. Yeah. I really have to pay attention to what your body's signaling and what it's like, uh, you know, providing you along that process. But yeah, that happens all the time. I get clients that are just completely fixated on the number of reps, the number of sets, like being able to really match it like specifically. And it takes them away from then, well, how did it feel and how are you feel now that you've completed it? It's just, you know, they just get outside their body. I mean, we, we all still fucked us up. How many times? Did you put a weight on the oh, bars yeah. just in the last month <laughs> and you either underestimated or overestimated? That's just part. But this is also where uh, this is how I like to. I mean, everybody wants to program everything and debate over which way is better or how to phase in and out. But this is where I like to play with things like tempo 
and also uh, isolation exercises or excuse me, uh, isometric stuff. Yeah, there's other variables is, to consider. Yeah, like I mean, oh wow, I, I totally put not enough weight on this bar. Okay, cool. I'm I gonna, can make it heavier really easy. Right, yeah, like I'm gonna pause at the bottom for three or seconds. Squeeze the shit out of my oh, quads yeah, at the top. Bodybuilders are great at making like lightweight really hard. Yeah. So I mean that that what a great opportunity to to use those tools that most people don't manipulate in the first place. Uh, and instead of, you know, spending an extra 10 minutes getting on your phone with the calculator and putting in some, you know, crazy formula that is like me is totally moot because tomorrow when you don't get great sleep, it's going to, you're going to be off by 20%. It's 100%. Like stupid. Absolutely. Look, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have lots of free guides that can help you from everything from building muscle to burning body fat, improving mobility, reducing pain. We even have guides for personal trainers. It's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsalon, Adam at mindpumpadam.